All attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon and thanks everyone for joining us today for today's Great Garment Graphics webinar, No Digitizer on Hand, No Problem. My name is Jody Weiler and I will be your presenter today. Um, but first, before we get started, actually, you know what, I'll just tell you a little bit about me and then um, we'll move on to just a couple poll questions just to get a feel for, um, you know, for those of you attending and to make sure that I direct questions and information toward um, what your interests and actually what your your business is. So, um, as I stated, my name is Jody Weiler. I actually do work for Stalls ID Direct. I originally started in customer service as a customer um, custom logo representative. So, what we're talking about today, the custom cutting and custom cut products, twill and applique, was one of my specialties. And then I moved over to web marketing to become an education specialist and to present webinars to you after I had learned, um, af after I had learned certainly not everything there was to know, but a lot of, uh, of what is in the industry and um, current trends that are also happening in the industry. And I've also made a bazillion garment decorating mistakes. So as I'm sure you know as well, practice does make perfect. Um, so I do have just a couple polls that I was interested in relaying to you. And the first one, you may have answered this in your registration report, but this one is actually just a little bit different. So what is your main business? Um, do you strictly just sort of work with um, transfers and heat printing? Are you uh, an embroidery house, a screen printer that maybe does um, a little bit of embroidery on the side? And if you're a heat printer, uh, and then also direct to garment and sublimation. And then if there's any of you that really are looking to get in the business, and that's what I consider just doing research. Maybe you're just sitting in on this webinar just to learn a little bit more before you decide really what part of the business that you are interested in becoming a part of. So it looks like just about everyone's voted, so I'm going to close the poll here in just one second. And then if each of you could also just type in to me when you get a second that you can hear the audio, okay? Um, sometimes I've been already a few slides in, and people have said, oh my gosh, I can't hear you. Great. Well, welcome, David. Welcome, Gary and anyone else who decides to type in. So let me share the results. It looks like I'm shocked, but that most of the people here are in the heat printing business. And so I hope what you find this webinar really helpful. And then there's also 25% of you in embroidery, 13% in direct to garment and sublimation, and 13% of you are just doing research. So I think um, what I've outlined in this webinar should be actually really helpful for you because um, we talk a little bit about how to get your files digitized if a customer hands you a raster or a vector file, one embroidery house, but then also other ways in order to save stitches um, and whether to contract out your embroidery. So I do think that you will um, find this webinar hopeful or helpful, at least that's my hope. And then my next question is, are you currently using applique as a part of your sales offerings? And when I was in the custom logo department, I cannot even tell you how many customers I had that were full embroidery houses. And they would call me up and say, I have a customer who wants the applique. I'm terrified. I don't even know what to do. And um, for those of you that aren't using applique, that's a lot of what this webinar is about today, going to tell you how to implement applique into your business and also really how it's going to cut costs, save money, add to your sales offerings. And then for those of you that are simply heat printers, you can either decide perhaps to contract out your embroidery, which would be absolutely fair. That way you don't have to say no to any of your customers. And then you're also, you know, contracting out your business. Or um, we do have some offerings at Stalls ID that offer the look of embroidery, but um, with no sewing. So that's also really helpful. 
So it looks like 60% of you are not using applique as a sales offering. That's very exciting. And 20% of you don't even know what applique is. And so there's just a small percentage that actually know what applique is and are using it as part of your sales offering. So um, for those of you that are already using applique and um, maybe you're cutting your own or you're hand cutting it, um, hopefully you'll find some tips here in this webinar on how to um, maybe get that applique done just a little bit easier. So with that being said, let's get started. So on the agenda today, first we'll talk a little bit about a digitizing service called mworks.com. And I'm, there's several digitizing services out there. Um, and so maybe you already have a digitizing service you're using, or maybe you don't, you know, but if you don't, and you'd like to explore a new one, we'll talk a little bit about mworks.com. And then we'll move into getting to know applique. And then um, when you decide that you want to add applique as a sales, um, part of your sales offering, some guidelines in order to getting materials custom cut here at Stalls ID Direct. And then also the rip away applique process, which really on one sew disc or um, with one of, with just one sew disc that let's say you've already gotten cut out of twill, you can actually vary your offerings and the dimension um, of what you're going to offer with the same sew disc. So it's really kind of getting more bang for your buck. And then we'll talk a little bit about auto stitch letters and numbers. Um, that was another thing. I had so many customers who were either hand sewing their twill letters and numbers. Some of them were hand cutting them and then hand sewing them. And, um, you know, and so, or even digitizing their own. And so we do have a program called Auto Stitch Numbers and Letters that so few people know about that when each time I've told somebody about it, they've just been blown away at how much easier it actually can make their life. And then finally, we'll talk about what is SimStitch. So when we talk about mworks.com or any sort of digitizing service, the reason you may need to get a file digitized is your customers sort of handed you a either a raster file or a vector file and they want it done in embroidery. So what does that mean for you? Unless you are have an in-house digitizer or you already know how to want to take the time to digitize yourself and you have the software, then that generally means you somehow have to get that file digitized by someone else, which means sending it out to a digitizing house. Now, one thing to make clear, actually, um, so one thing to make clear is what is the difference between raster art and vector art. And the nice thing is, is that MWorks takes, it will accept both. But um, I just wanted to um, touch on like what the difference between those are because not everybody knows. And so raster artwork is actually digitally created using pixels. So when you look at this, this is, it's actually just um, an, an, a measure of how the quality of the image is typically measured in DPI, which is dots per inch. So that tells you that a raster image is compiled of a bunch of tiny little dots of different colors put together in order to create this image over here. So the quality of a raster image um, can be neg negatively affected by having to be recolored, manipulated, and especially having to make it in a larger size. So raster images are typically created in programs such as Corel Photo Paint or Adobe Photoshop, and those are the software programs typically used to create raster art. So in the industry, when you hear us talk about vector art, Vector art is digitally created using lines, shapes, curves, and paths that can easily be recolored, manipulated, and resized without affecting the image quality at all. So if you get a vector image, let's say you get in at 2x2, two two, if you enlarge it to a 10x10, 10 10, it does not affect the quality the way it will a raster. A raster, um, as you increase the size, the dots per inch actually decrease, so the clarity of your image um, gets distorted and is decreased, whereas you don't have that issue with vector. So more and more in the industry, you know, the industry is turning to vector art simply because it is a changeable piece of artwork that somebody can create and they can reproduce it in many different medias, in many different files, in many different types, pass it along, and the quality of the image is not affected. So the programs you would need in order to create vector artwork are Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator. 
Illustrator. There's obviously others. Um, Stalls ID Direct offers, you know, CADWorks Live as an option, and, and there's several others to create, but really Corel and Illustrator are the most popular. And um, just a few housekeeping notes. Please, if you have any questions while I'm talking, even if I'm talking too fast or talking too loud, or if there's something that pops up that you'd like to know that I'm not touching on, please feel free to type in your questions. And I will typically, I can see them right here on my, um, on my dashboard. So I will typically answer them as we're going along. Um, and then I always leave time at the end, you know, for those last minute questions that you may think of as we're beginning to wrap up. Also, another thing to note for those of you that have come in late, maybe missed the intro, um, this session is being recorded. So typically within 24 to 48 hours, we do post it on e both at Great Gar www.greatgarmentgraphics.com. We post it both in the archive section, and it will also, if you've signed up to receive our emails, you will also receive it right in your inbox as part of a blog post. And typically in the blog post, I also include maybe some um, other maybe PDFs, and a PDF of this slideshow will be available to you. But if I have other sort of resources, I may include those in the blog post as well. So it's really helpful to receive it in your inbox. And if you don't want to do that, you can always go to Great Garment Graphics and just go to the blog tab and find it. So moving on, so the question then, okay, so your customers handed you a raster of vector file and they want embroidery done out of it. So you need to create this into a quality sew file or stitch file that you can reproduce this with your embroidery machine. So MPWorks is one of the sources in order to be able to do that. So what it does is exactly it digitizes your raster or your vector art in order to create files for direct embroidery and or applique. So let's go out to um, MWorks and then I'll just show you a little bit about the site. I have it actually right here. So um, it's super easy to use. You would simply just register as a new user. It's absolutely free to register. And then you would request an online quote. You would just follow the easy wizard steps. And then um, once you receive a quote, if that is an acceptable price for you, you would convert your quote to an order. And then, of course, they're going to send you order alerts. Everything is done online. Um, but they do have 24-7 customer support that you could call. Um, and you would check for your order to order alerts and then obviously download your um, download your file and then the pricing is based on the number of stitches which those of you in embroidery understand that language because you actually charge you know the price that you charge your customers is typically based on the number of stitches for the design so if we were to go to MWorks, and let's see, okay, good, you can see it. Um, so here, it just gives you an example here of a raster, um, and then, you know, your full embroidery file, and then, um, so some of the benefits here are it's 24-7 online ordering, um, they have live telephone support, you can track your order online. They have one, two, and three-day services available. So you are able to rush your order if need be. And I'm quite sure that most of you as business owners understand that most people wait to the last minute for everything. And they come in and they say, I need this today or tomorrow. Um, and so they can also offer you a JPEG image of your sewn sample. sample and your invoices can be viewed on online, online at any time, and they accept major credit cards. So as you can see, it's pretty simple. You would just log in, follow their wizard, send them a raster or vector file. They'll give you a quote, and then you decide if, um, if you want to move forward or not. And it's actually a free quote, so you don't actually even pay anything to get it. So that's definitely one source of getting your artwork digitized. It's just I wonder why we have this box. Okay, good. It looks like that cleared up. Okay. So moving along just a little bit more about MWorks, and I actually think I do have, if you download the PDF of this file, I also have it linked 
too. So you can actually just get right there from the PDF file. And if you're doing that and you download the PDF, make sure you have it um, in full slideshow view. If you have it just tiled, the links don't, the hyperlinks don't work in a PowerPoint presentation. Just to, just a little FYI. So then the question becomes, you know, what about applique? So we've already established that 60 to 80 percent of us in this webinar don't either don't know what applique is or currently aren't using applique. And applique is simply all it means is, is that it's not in opposition. So when we're talking direct embroidery, we're talking your entire designs, all the colors, everything is done with your embroidery machine in stitches. And when you implement, when you start using applique, what it is, is it's actually material, some type of fabric, any type of fabric that's actually cut out and it's simply sewn around the edges. So what you're doing is, number one, you're saving stitches because you're only sewing around the edges and you have actual material filling in this inside, whereas if you're direct embroidery, this is all going to be stitching. It's all going to be fill stitch, um, which sometimes the job calls for that. Um, it will also reduce your sewing time, obviously, because you're using less stitches. It will add different type of texture and dimension to your design, so you actually get that feel of um, the twill. And then stalls, you actually offer several applique options when, when you think about applique. So we have a um, free design wizard, Any Word Anyway, which is actually what this was created in. So this design entirely here was just created online through a templated sort of system that has several fonts available. And then um, the pieces were cut out and you order a sew file to go along with it. And so it actually digitizes your um, your embroidery machine and we'll get into that a little bit more and sews it out for you. So it's really um, easier, you know, it's a nice easy way to, to increase your offerings in your embroidery house. And then we also offer custom cut designs. So let's say um, you need something, a particular custom logo cut out or a customer has a particular font of their own that they're um, that they're looking in order that they're looking to produce. That's when you would want to get the design custom cut. We also have the auto stitch letters and numbers, which I already uh, mentioned. We also have a Twill Stitch Pro Plus CD, which goes along with your um, embroidery machine in order to create more fonts, have more fonts available to you, and actually create your own sew files. And then the rip away applique process. And so we'll be touching on all of these as we go through. So first for custom cut products. So your customer comes in and offers and tells you that they want a custom cut design. They have a logo that um, you can't really produce in any word anyway, that you can't really cut for them, and that would make good sense in order to use as an applique. Because one thing to remember is that Stalls is not a digitizing house. So anytime you're ordering, let's say, a sew file from us, it will be because you've ordered cut pieces. And when I say cut pieces, I mean cut pieces of some type of applique, which might be um, twill, might be any of the box or craft fabrics, might be any of the applique fabrics, might even be sublimated twill. We can also, in the custom department, use your sublimate twill to your own custom sublimation pattern. Um, the options are pretty limitless as far as custom goes. Um, so I don't want to say limitless, but I do want to say that our custom cut department does a lot of stuff. But we do not ever just digitize a disc for um, a complete direct embroidery sew file. So if that is what you're looking for, that's when you would reach out to mworks.com or another digitizing house of your choice. So if you're looking for custom cut products, meaning applique, um, you would go right here on the website. So this is the home page of the website, and you would find it under custom cut products. Now, we prefer that when you're sending in these designs that they are vector, um, but it doesn't need to be. They can sometimes even, we've had people hand, hand us hand drawings, although it will cost you more for the artist in order to recreate that art. 
um, raster art, raster art, or vector, vector art. But either way, there's always a minimum of, of a twenty dollars setup fee. And the applique is priced actually by the square inch, so it actually goes by the size of your design. And you would need to order a minimum of six cut pieces. And you would typically upload your art at uploadstallsid.com for a quote. So let's see if we can go out to the upload site. And I can just give you an idea of what that'll look like. So you can find it on stalls, that link under the custom cut products. But so this is what it'll look like when you get to the upload your artwork page. And what you would select is either custom is custom cut if you're doing applique and heat, heat seal materials. So you would fill in your name, phone number, all of those type things. So let's try doing that. So let's say I'm Jody. And then um, your quote would be emailed to you. Um, I don't really have a dealer number to put in, but you would. And then let's select the custom cut, and we'll just sign in. So to give you an idea of really how easy this is in order to upload your custom artwork, so here's, let's say I want 12 pieces. You will get a better price break at 12 pieces as opposed to six. It's actually quite significant. Um, and I want my design to be six by eight wide and my fabric that I am applying to is polyester you can select other or unknown if you don't exactly know what you're putting it on um, I'm actually applying onto a gar a dark garment now when they say applique materials this is when we're talking about either acrylic felt which I didn't mention applique fabrics when we talk about applique fabrics at Stalls ID Direct we actually have two of them or the boxer craft fabrics would be considered applique fabrics but the applique fabrics we talk about are sparkly so there is sparkly silver and there is a metallic um, gold which is often used like in dance and cheer um, and then felt of course poly twill and pressure sensitive twill and we're actually going to get into the difference between um, poly twill and pressure sensitive twill later on in this webinar. So I just want regular poly twill. I need it in a two color design. And um, I can put in whatever notes I need, like um, 12 pieces, whatever notes you have from your customer. And if you want to sew disk and then upload your file, which is the same really as attaching to an email, and then you upload it. One thing to remember is once you click upload file, if it's been successful, you will get a reference number. There's no other way to access that reference number unless you write it down as soon as it pops up for you. You won't be able to find it in any of your account information. It doesn't typically send you an email telling you what your reference number is. And it's really the only way that they can find your quote. So please, when you're uploading artwork, make sure, make sure, make sure that you um, write down that reference number. And that's it. And then so then the custom department receives your quote, takes a look at your artwork, and sends you a quote back, typically within 24 hours. So some guidelines to consider. And this is where this works out a little bit different than the direct embroidery. This is also a good way to decide, should I use applique? Or is this something that I'm going to need to direct fill stitch or direct embroider in? So line thickness and cavity size are the most important things in determining what can actually be cut for applique. And it's different for different materials. So when you look at line, stem, and thickness, um, it needs to be for regular film or thermal grip for twill, pressure sensitive twill, or having a kiss cut needs to be at least a 0.18. And your cavity needs to be at least a 0.09. And type in if this is making sense to you when I talk about these little measurements. Because if not, we can go out to Corel Draw and I can show you exactly 
what I mean and the best way to be able to measure for that and make sure that you're sending in a file that um, isn't going to have to be modified a whole lot. It doesn't necessarily mean that we can't make some modifications here, and we will, and we do. That's absolutely not a problem. But if your line stem thickness or your cavities are significantly below this, then oftentimes what happens is, is your design needs to be modified so much that it doesn't even resemble the likeness of your original design. Um, and then if you're using twill, pressure sensitive twill, or kiss cut with direct embroidery, your line stem thickness needs to be at least 0.225 with a cavity of at least a 0.09. So each cavity needs to be at least a 0.09. And then for the any word anyway that we'll be talking about shortly, or for a SimStitch logo, it's actually the same line stem, stem thickness, 0.225, but your cavities need to at least be a 0.1. Okay. So when we talk about, okay, so what does this mean in materials? What is twill? What is pressure sensitive twill? What is kiss cut? The difference between those is poly twill has simply a heat sensitive backing. So in order to um, embroider it, in order to be able to sew it out, you must use a tack spray in order to adhere it for placement and then sew it after. And then um, pressure sensitive twill is poly twill, but it's pressure sensitive because it has a peel and stick backing, which eliminates the need for a tack spray. So you can just peel and stick the backing, and then you don't have to um, use a tack spray in order to lay it down and in order to sew it out because you won't experience any movement there. And when we talk about Kiss Cut, Kiss Cut utilizes pressure sensitive twill in either a two or three color design. Obviously, you don't need a Kiss Cut to send it to you pre-aligned, or in other words, each layer is kissing. So really, as an embroiderer, it allows for only one sew out and no need for rehooping. So instead of, if you're just using regular twill, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to, um, or even pressure sensitive twill in two separate layers, which I don't know why you'd ever want to do that, but that doesn't say that 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 hasn't, you know, that people haven't ordered it that way. But if you're just using regular poly twill, um, and if you're an experienced embroiderer, I've had plenty of people that don't want to pay extra because obviously for the convenience of Kiss Cut, you do pay a little extra. And they're just fine sewing it out the way they've always sewn it. So you would lay down your one layer of poly twill, you would use your tack spray, you would sew out that one layer, and then you would have to rehoop, lay down the second layer, and then get everything realigned and sew out your second layer. Kiss Cut eliminates that second step. So really, it comes to you kissing or pre-aligned pretty much all one layer, and then the sew disc is actually pre-digitized in order to just go right from bottom layer, you know, from placement stitch to bottom layer to top layer with no missing steps. So honestly, Kiss Cut is actually worth its weight, really, in gold. So when we talk about determining stitch counts, okay, what are cavities? Philip, cavities are, when, when we talk about cavities, okay, show how you're measuring on corral. Okay, Fawn, that's going to take just a second for me to pull up my corral, but I think you'll get a lot better of an idea. I'll see if I can find a design that we can. When I talk about cavities, it actually means the holes in, in your design. So let me see if I can't. Um, just pull something up. So if you just, thank you for your patience, it'll just take me one second to, um, and Mark, if you could clarify what you mean by do they look any different? Oh, are you talking about between the twill, the pressure sensitive twill, and the kiss cut? No, they don't look any different. That is all the behind the scenes sort of action that just kind of really makes your life a lot easier, but they look exactly the same when it's all sewed and done. <laughs> okay, so let's see. So let me pull in design. So when you get a design from, let's go into customer files here, see if I can't, okay, 
So let's say, let's just take this sun trail, for example. Okay, this is going to be our applique de design. Okay, so let's just take sun trail. Now, what I want to do then in order to see at, let's make it a little bit bigger to size. So whatever your design, this isn't actually the best example, but I hope you guys will get the idea. Um, so first of all, let's see what size this design is. Okay, so if we were going to do sun trail. So what I would do is in Corel, I would just place a box around it. And then up here, it's going to tell me what my, okay, so let's make this, um, so this sun trail is actually going to be a six inch wide design. So let's widen our box to six inches. And then I'm going to actually increase the design to fill that box, hopefully, in order to make, to make, to get that six inches, which that could take a really long time. But if we're looking at, okay, so when we talk about a cavity, a cavity is right here. Where's my arrow? These are the cavities, right? The spacing in your O, this hole in the U. Uh, this is a cavity in between the R. This is a cavity here on the A. This, and so really, if we were thinking about this being applique, this would actually be a two-color design where this applique would be the entire back piece. So for those of you that have been creating stuff like this using actual direct embroidery, you can now really implement applique at, I'm not kidding you, a quarter of the cost of what you're charging in order to do fill. So there's two ways you could do this actual design. You could um, just have applique as the full in the background and do direct embroidery digitized all through here, or you can make this a two-color applique. This would likely be direct embroidery, or maybe this piece right here could be. So let's say your background is black, and then this could be cut in white, and then sewn out typically with a zigzag or a satin stitch. So let's check out these cavities and see. I'm going to go back to my cavity page and make sure that we know what exactly we're looking for. So I'm quite sure if we wanted to do this in twill, we need our line stem thicknesses to be 0.225, and we need at least 0.09 on the cavities. Okay, so what I do is, is I make a circle, and I make it 0.225. And then I color it a color that's not on the design. And I take that circle and I place it on my line stem thicknesses, which would be this U. See, and if you can see, we would have to thicken those lines just a hair in order to meet the line stem thickness. Let's see if we've got it on the R, but it looks like we'd be okay. So if we're okay on those line stem thicknesses, we know we're okay on our big, thick, one-piece background, but yes. So we would have to, and at 6 by 6 this would have matched anyway, Once we had, if we had been able to increase the design enough to fill out this whole box, we definitely would have matched. And then so for point, and then for your cavities, you would want to do a .09, right, because that's what we're looking at requiring. and then color that a different color. So I usually use yellow or red is actually what I use the most. And then we would take it and see if our cavities match. So let's see if, our, if we're good on our cavities. Yep, looks like we're pretty good on our cavities there. So this isn't the best design to actually be illustrating this, but I hope you get sort of the concept. So really, it's just using your circle tool on the left-hand part of Corel, creating a circle for the size, the line stem thickness, or the cavity size that you need, and just kind of doing that double check to make sure before you send it in. 
Can I zoom a bit? Yes, I can zoom. So let's see if this helps a little bit. Oops. And that's actually what I do on my own is I zoom um, and make it actually really big at size. So let's do that one more time. 0.225 and let's double check our line stem thickness. And then you always have to go over to the arrow to move it. See? So it would be fine if we zoomed it at 6.6, .6, but now that we're looking closer, you see, okay, so this is way too thick to be sent in. So typically then, if it is actually at size and your line stem thickness doesn't match, then maybe you just want the background, stick it with applique, and then this would have to be direct embroidered. Or if you could make modifications to the design and have it, and it still doesn't modify it so much, if you adjust the line stem thickness, then you can do that and actually have this done in applique. Okay, good. It looks like... Um, Yes, you can actually do the exact same thing in Illustrator. Absolutely. You would just use the ellipse tool, make it um, our, uh, create a circle for whatever line stem, th stem thickness or cavity size that you need, and then that's just really a great way to, um, to just double check your work. Oh, yes, thank you for double checking me. Yes, Angela. So if we take it down to 0.225, we make it just a little bit smaller. And it looks like we would still need modifications in order to get that line stem thickness to match. But as we can see, if this design was filling out the 6x6 six six box, I'm quite sure that we would be just fine. So I hope, that, I hope that's helpful. So let's talk about stitch counts. Okay. So when we talk about stitch count, um, and how to determine a stitch count for areas that are entirely fill stitched, like the one we were just looking at, let's say if you needed, um, if we would just measure out that one area of the text sunfire that needed to be full stitched, a rule of thumb is that at a one by one, the area usually equals, so each one by one inch square area equals a thousand stitches. And for applique that has satin stitched outlines, it's the total square inch of the design times 1,000 and then divided by 3, which will give you your approximate stitch count for whatever design in order for you to pass on your cost or in order for you to price your design. So let's say your size of design, for example, is a 3 by 14. So if we multiply 3 by 14, we get the total number of square inches of a particular design. So our total stitches, if you were to direct embroider, it would be 42,000. Um, stitches. But if we're going to implement applique with a satin stitch, we would take that 42,000 stitches, divide it by three, and that's for a satin, and it's even less. It's about half for zigzag stitching. So we'd get, um, so 14,000 stitch would be your, stitches would be your stitch count. If you're creating a 3 by 14 design using applique with a satin, st satin stitch, and I would say seven to 9,000 if you're going to use a zigzag stitch. And so a lot of my customers opt for a zigzag stitch, you know, because it saves them money as well. And also it depends on really what your customer wants. So if you're going to implement a name drop with that, and you can type in if we don't know what a name drop is, but all a name drop is, and I can actually show you a design once we, is, um, is just a direct embroidered typically onto twill or a name drop could be direct embroidery onto anything. So let's say we have uh, Dodgers with a tail and they want baseball direct embroidered into that tail. Typically name drops add about roughly 5,000 stitches, give or take a few stitches, but that would, that's a pretty good guideline in order for you to price your project when you're actually passing the quote onto your customer. So some tips for sewing applique um, on an embroidery machine. So when you're creating applique designs, just a little bit of hooping advice, you make sure your hoop is tight within the hoop wells. Um, some hoop assemblies will um, produce a little play, allowing the applique registration to move. So it's very important that you make sure your, height, your hoop is tight. 
And if your hoop slips in any direction, the column switch won't catch the edge of your fabric properly. So if this happens, the applique fabric can loosen the garment and fray. So that's another thing why you want to make sure that your hoop is in and you're kind of watching while you're sewing just to double check for these things that your hoop is running smoothly, that um, everything's getting sewn smoothly on there. Um, so if you're using actual bracket hoops, make sure your bracket screws are tight. I can't tell you how many times we've sort of um, put the hoop on and then forgotten to screw them on nice and tight, and so they eventually lose, um, loosen themselves, and then you have vibration and movement, and then you have a design that's not sewed on properly. If you're using jacket back hoops that drop into hoop wells, make sure they wedge themselves into the hole securely. If you notice any play there, try putting a little bit of small cardboard wedge um, into one end of the well. Your design needs to be one inch smaller than the inside of the hoop. So if you have a 10 by 10 hoop, your design cannot be larger than 9 by 9 when you're cutting applique. You need absolutely need an inch or more of clearance in order to um, get a proper sew out. And also you want to use a hoop that's closest in size to the design because it will help prevent the hoop from bouncing. As far as backings, when you're sewing applique, a good stiff backing is really important. So no sort of flimsy light backing for that. Um, the backing will help stabilize your garment and hold your stitches. Tearaway works the best. We use all tearaway here in our embroidery department when we're sewing out samples. Um, it just makes your life a lot easier. You get a cleaner finish being able to tear away even the cavities sometimes. And so you just get a cleaner inside of your garment. Might create just a little bit more work for you, but tearaway actually works best with applique. When you're running applique on your embroidery machine, your machine should be between five and 700 stitches per minute. And the reason for this is, and that may seem a slow stitch to some of you that are used to doing direct embroidery, but when you slow down that speed, your, your hoop is going to bounce less while you're sewing. And when you sew faster, the applique can bounce, which will, um, could cause you to lose your registration. Another benefit of sewing out at a slower speed for your applique is that it will also prevent the adhesive from the bottom coming up to the top of the twill, which, also, which resembles like snowflakes. And so you get this, these little white crumbles all on the top of your design that can, I mean, you can just brush them off, but it is sort of annoying. And especially if you have them when you do that, if you haven't cleaned them off when you do that final heat printing process um, in order to, um, the heat sealing when you're finished to give you a more professional and finished look. And this also will prevent puckering. So anytime you're sewing applique when you're done with your sew out, you always want to heat apply the finished design in order to prevent puckering and it gives it a nice smooth firm finish and so if you have some of that those snowflakes left over um, then you're going to get some adhesive on to your design and it's not necessarily going to be all that good so another way in addition to preventing in a, in a excuse me, another way to prevent that from happening in addition to slowing down the speed of your machine is to use Teflon needles Teflon coated needles will um, allow enough slip and slide in between while it's sewing out in order to prevent any adhesive from coming up to the top. And typically I've experienced or what I've noticed is more of that happening with Kiss Cut or with the pressure sensitive twill. It doesn't happen as often or close to never with just regular poly twill. So one of the ways that you can actually create applique with no custom charges, since we already talked about custom, is um, any word anyway. And it's best, it um, allows for sew and no sew options, thousands of combinations of text and numbers. You don't, you can't really get, let's say, a custom logo as far as you can't create a dolphin or any like that, anything like that in the templates. It's, tip it's typically a text templated designer. Um, and we're actually going to go out there so you can get a pretty good idea of what any word anyway is. You can get custom designs without paying custom charges. And the templates offer script and block fonts with split front and tail options and an optional sew disk if you don't want to do your own digitizing for a soupy, super easy sew out. So if you're not sure which any word anyway is good for you, we have this handy little tool, um, the any word anyway at a glance. 
And this kind of gives you a pretty good idea. Um, it's just kind of a little chart of, okay, so which one do I want? Do I want standard? Do I want distressed? Do I want sublimated? Do I want kiss cut? I mean, there's a lot of options. And so if you don't know a lot about applique, then these terms seem a little bit confusing. So let's just roll through a few of those, these terminologies that I'm talking about. So sim stitch is what we're going to talk about later, and that's actually a no-sew option, um, and it uses permatwell, and it has the look of a zigzag stitching without the sewing. So this is simply heat applied with your heat press. You can create this in the Any Word Anyway design system. Sublimated sim stitch is actually a um, twill that has certain prints on it, so le leopard, reptilian, tiger stripe, zebra stripe, um, certain plaids, and then also some special effects onto actual twill. And that's pretty cool. Standard is typically what you would use um, if you want to just stick with the regular poly twill. You're willing to do those one and two color sew outs that aren't kiss cut or come pre-aligned. And, um, you know, those have black and script designs available. Um, it's available in acrylic felt, wool felt, and then all different kinds of all the twills and also applique fabrics. So, and then the distressed, if you're looking for a distressed option um, with no, no sew and sewing, you can get flock if you're not going to sew. But if you are a sewer, and many of you are in this webinar, then you can, you have several options for creating distress. It's super easy. One thing I do recommend, though, for the distress is I've actually done it both ways, but if you can get it pre-aligned, if your design um, does allow for pre-aligned, get it pre-aligned because this is definitely one of the areas where it's very, very helpful to have it pre-aligned or what we call kiss cut. And then um, it also does offer kiss cut and then kiss cut applique distressed. So this chart is really handy just to kind of keep by your desk or keep on file to decide what kind of, which one is best for you with regards to what your customer is looking for. So let's head out to stalls.com. Here we go. I'm just going to move this screen over here. And then when we want to go to any word anyway, actually, let me just enlarge this. Right on the home page, you can find it. Several options. So let's try a kiss cut applique. But here's where you would select, like I said, like exactly what we were talking about, whether you wanted it just a sublimated sim stitch. You have just regular sublimate, sublimated twill applique. And one thing to note is that the sublimated twill is our perma twill and cut with a laser, so it does not need to be sewn, but you can sew it for a for added dimension and style. So let's go to the kiss cut applique, and then we'll just take a look and see what's available. So here's just some pictures. This is actually a twill design. Looks like it's been sewn out with a satin stitch to color, but look at it gives the look of a three color design simply by sewing it out in the white satin stitch. So you have two colors of twill here. This is sewn down with a zigzag stitch to save on some stitching. And actually zigzag placement for the bottom layer is really helpful because it really makes that top layer pop out. So we've got zigzag stitching on the bottom layer. Here, let's see if I can not just zoom in a little bit. And then satin stitch on the foreground in order to create that three color looking design. And this was all created just in a templated wizard. So this is actually a three color design. So now it looks like a zigzag stitch on all of it. Here we have a nice close this is three colors as well. Looks like it's a burgundy on top of a Carolina blue on top of a, maybe a Tennessee red. Not sure what color that is. Here's the two color. 
both layers sewn in a zigzag stitching. That's just a nice close-up of that. And then this is also a two-color design. So let's go. Um, I don't need a proof today. I am going to, but we can email a proof to you. So it will, um, but today we're not going to need a proof. And I think I want, okay, so what, just let's go into the design view for those of you who haven't. So what does that mean? What size? I don't know what size I want. Oh, here we go. So uh, my design, my customer wants a large. It's going on a um, an adult garment. And they want it 14 inches wide, so I think we'll go with extra large here, 3 and a half by 14. You can also put in your own sizing. So it does allow for custom sizing, but let's go extra large. I only have one line of text. I'm going to use Detroit, since that's where I'm from. And... Um, one of our hometown heroes just stepped down, so we'll just go, let's go with a, oh, let's go with a script, because I would like to add a tail. Oh, my font selection is missing. So, why is it not popping up for me? I don't know what's going on with my wizard. I could have too many things open. Here we go. So, if I'm going to go with strip, script, here's what I have available, and I like... I like the athletic script the best. So I'm going to go two color, and we're doing this kiss cut. Oh, see, it's yelling at me. I have to select my foreground first. And I'm pretty sure you can see, hopefully you can see what it's showing up on the side. So I'm going to use my Detroit colors. We're going to use an orange background and a navy foreground. So, Tennessee, orange background, and then a navy foreground. And as you can see in the designer, it's going to pop up. Um, I don't really want it arched. I want this to go straight across. Um, but I do want the D not connected. So if I did want it connected, this is what it would look like. See how the S is connected to the, but I don't want it connected. So we're going to go with the default not connected. And I would like a plain tail. We're just going to go pretty simple here. We'll go with that standard tail. And... Mm, I don't have a split front. I'm just putting this on the front of a hoodie. And yes, I would like a sew disc in order to sew this out. So my stitch type, I would like a satin stitch on my foreground, and I would like a zigzag stitch on my background. My machine format, I would like it in a Tajima CD. Um, I'm going to have my applique stop at the top, which just means where your machine is going to stop at. I don't have a quilted garment, and I don't need a name drop. There you go. It's complete. And then I don't know. You could see a little bit. I don't know. I should have changed that and had, like, the D big. Let's just see if we can go back and do that. So let's – I did that wrong. I made everything. I was going to go block, but then I decided to go script. So let's switch that up there. We don't, we want, now we're complete. Let's, so let's, and it'll adjust it for me in the design window. That's much better. That's what I'm talking about. Now, yes, Philip, I will include um, an email copy of the Any Word Anyway um, yep, I can email it to you, absolutely, because I think I do have your email address, but I will also include it in the blog post. I'll include it where you could just download it and access it and save it right to your computer. So 
That is an easy way to create just a script design, no custom charges. And let's see, it's not going to show up pricing for me because I'm actually in my, um, in, you know, in employee use and it doesn't show up pricing. But um, thanks, Philip. I'll do that as soon as we get out of here. I will email um, each of you, those of you who have attended the link to the chart. So as you can see, you know, any word anyway is super easy to use. It offers you several options in order to um, in order to be able to create text designs and have them sewn out. And you no longer have to do this in complete um, embroidery. You can actually use, utilize applique and twill, which is such a cheap material, in order to save costs and create a really cool design. So another thing that um, I actually wasn't going to mention, but since we're right here, is that applique sample kits are actually really helpful in order to try the Any Word Anyway products for yourself and also have samples to allow customers to be able to look, see, and feel what is it you're talking about. So the applique sample kit, it's actually $20 for it, well worth the money. Comes with the sew out, it comes with the designs. All you need to do is uh, have your embroidery machine and hoodies and shirts to put these samples on and then your customers can actually see and I'm going to tell you something as soon as you put these up I have had more customers sell more applique just as a result of people seeing it and saying oh my god that is so cool and then with the rage of distressed you can order distress just like I just like you saw me order the kiss cut and create a distressed design without having to do any of your own cutting David, absolutely. This design absolutely allows for a split hoodie, um, for zipper hoodies, for a splint front baseball jersey, and no, you don't have to cut it by yourself. We actually do all the cutting and the sizing for you, and it's already included on your sew desk in order to sew it out. We do also have a video on Stalls ID Direct that is simply for how to sew applique onto a split front jersey. And what I've experienced is, is that that's actually when most of my customers get into applique, is they have a split front jersey and they call, it is awesome, David, <laughs> I think you're right. Um, that's when they call, they say, oh my gosh, I have a baseball jersey or I have this uh, zip up hoodie that they want me to do applique on and I'm terrified. How do I do split front? It's super, super easy. All it really is is, um, and the video can help you, and if you guys want to see it, I can show it, but unfortunately the sound doesn't come through on the GoToWebinar. But um, I will also include a link to that video in the post-webinar blog because it's super helpful. Julia in our training department shows you right there on that video how to sew out a split front jersey, and it would be exactly the same for a zipper front hoodie, which is actually easier. So that's definitely... Um, you can do it right in that wizard. Okay. So we've talked a little bit about Any Word Anyway. And for those of you who are interested in Any Word Anyway, I'm only touching on it a little bit in this webinar because Thursday I'm offering a full hour tutorial on all six sections of Any Word Anyway and how utilizing this easy template system can really benefit your business. So, um, but I did want to touch on it here. It was relevant. It was important. Not all of you have time on a Tuesday and a Thursday to dedicate to webinars and leave your business. So, um, but if you think that's something you might be interested in, please register. Um, so, what to do with that sew disc that I had a one color design for DHS that I created in any word anyway, or my one color design that I, or two color even, there's ways to do it in two color, which I'm not sure that we actually have video of yet, but we have done a webinar on. Um, and what else can I do with that, or do I just have to leave my sew disc sitting around, you know, just waiting for them to reorder something different? Absolutely not. What you can do is you can order um, the Stahl's Ripaway applique process, which is um, super, super cool. So as you can see, but you can only do it with a satin stitch. It's required that it only works with a satin stitch otherwise. So what this process is, let's go there right now, actually, and I will tell you all about the Stahl's Ripaway applique process. So it is a way to combine your sew disk that you may already have or a sew file that you've already created on your own as long as it's utilizing satin stitch 
and Saul's CAD cut glitter flake heat transfer material to create the look of applique with an extra added bling. So you would simp simply start with an applique sew file and your favorite color of glitter flake. You would sew out your stitch and then you would rip away that excess glitter flake material almost in the same way that you would tear away a tear away backing. It is honestly that easy. So all you need is an embroidery machine, a non-stick embroidery machine needle, so those Teflon coated needles that I was talking to you about, and you finish the design with the heat press. So and an applique sew file that uses satin stitch, it won't work with a zigzag stitch. Um, and CAD cut glitter flake, you would want to use a little bit of light tack spray, a cover sheet, a heat printing pillow, and weeding tweezers. So let's just review the eight steps. And then um, there is also a video instructions and also video testimonials. So you would sew out the placement stitch that's already on your sew disc, right? So anytime you get a any word anyway design or a custom cut design, your sew disc is going to sew out just a placement stitch. It's going to tell you where to place those pieces at in order to line them up. So you would sew out that placement stitch. You would cut out enough glitter flake um, required as the required size in order to cover this entire DHS, and you would remove it from the mylar carrier. Make sure that you actually have at least a quarter inch edging that is larger than, let's say, this DHS design. And then you would just simply spray a little bit of light tack spray on the back. Place that over your placement stitch that's already been laid out with your DHS. Position the glitter flake panel you can see over here over the placement stitch, ensuring all areas of the stitch are covered. You would sew then your satin stitch around the glitter flake panel with a machine speed between 5 and 700, and we talked about the reason why you want to sew between 5 and 700 with applique. And then you would just simply rip away the excess glitter flake material, and then using tweezers or a weeder tool, if you had any smaller cavities, you would want to weed those out. You would remove it from the hoop and the heat press garment using a cover sheet, and then you heat apply it as a final step. And that's what you've got. So that's pretty cool. So that's how you would utilize the rip away applique process along with a sew desk. So now for auto stitch letters and numbers. So I have had several people call. Um, sometimes they're using pre-cut letters and numbers and they're hand sewing them. Sometimes they're cutting their own letters and numbers. Sometimes they are restricted only to using heat transfer vinyl because um, they don't really have a way to sew it out and sew out letters and numbers. And what's nice about auto stitch letters and numbers is you get custom cut lettering to use with sew discs. Now, it's typically the Pro Block font or the, um, what's the other one, the Pro Block and the other athletic font, I can't remember the name, I can't believe I can't remember the name of it right now, the one that has the serifs and the feet, um, and also Greek, so letters, numbers, and Greek, and we're actually going to go out to the website in a minute and take a look at it. Um, the letters and numbers are available in 12, they're available in pressure sensitive 12, they're available in, available in the metallic applique fabrics and the boxer cap, craft patterns that you see, this is actually a boxer craft pattern. So you can order a sew disc for, let's say, four inch pro block numbers. You can order an individual sew disc for just that size letter for $36. Or if you think you're going to be using this more, I urge you to invest in the sew file collection CD, which includes pro block font and I can't believe I can't think of this font right now. It's absolutely driving me crazy. So we're going to go out there right now to auto stitch. So let me move this over here. So the styles available is Pro Block and Varsity. Can you believe I couldn't remember that? Pro Block and Varsity. So Pro Block has the letters and numbers with no serifs. The Varsity has it available with serifs, Mega Greek, and Greek. So 
If you just order, let's say you need, like I said, the four inch pro black letters, you will get a sew disc for $36, allowing you to sew out either in a zigzag or a satin stitch the entire alphabet. So even if you only ordered D-E-T-R-O-I-T, -E you will still get a sew disc that allows you to sew out the entire alphabet in order to order those pieces later. But, so if you have to order two of these, you're up to $72, right? So for, um, I believe it's $124, you can get the entire Sew File Collection CD that has all, every single letter size, 2 inch, 3 inch, narrow, 4 inch, all number sizes in Pro Block, Varsity, Mega Greek, and Greek available in both satin stitch and um, and zigzag stitch, so you could do either or, and it also includes all the applique shapes, which I'll, sh which I'll show you what those are as well. So, so files for all of that. So really, I mean, it's pretty beneficial. Let me check on the actual um, price of it for you since none of my prices come up here. Um, so the actual price of your auto stitch letters and numbers. 72 for two, I want to say it's like 136 for the auto stitch. 124 is how much it is for the Sew File Collection CD. So either way, but the point is, is that for, with auto stitch letters and numbers, you actually get the cut pieces and you get a sew file that's actually going to allow you to sew out several letters, um, you know, several names and numbers just like this. So you can actually sew out Davis number five with ease. How cool is that? Let's see if we can get to applique shapes and I can show you where those are. Because on the Sew File Collection CD, the applique shapes are available. So we've got, these are all the little applique shapes that are available for sew out. Capsules, circles, footballs hockey sticks, ovals, paws, which are actually really popular in my neighborhood, uh, megaphones, maple leaves, shields, rectangles, and stars. So all you would have to do is order the shapes, and on that Sew File Collection CD, you have, um, you already have those available. Oh, I'm running over time a little bit here, so let me speed up a little bit. So Sim Stitch. Um, Sim Stitch is great for customers who want the look of embroidery but don't want to pay for it. So for those of you in this webinar right now who are only in the heat printing business and are either contracting out their embroidery or know nothing about embroidery, this is the way that you can offer embroidery um, and only have to apply it and requires no sewing. Um, for only application with a heat press. Now, as far as SimStitch goes, we have, you can get any word anyway available in SimStitch. You can get SimStitch custom cut in our custom cut department. We have SimStitch letters. We have SimStitch numbers. So there's several ways you can get that look of embroidery and only if you only have a heat press available to you. For those of you that are in embroidery house, you have a customer walk in who just about chokes at the price of embroidery. Um, and you should never have to sell yourself short. But this also allows you an option in order to offer the look of embroidery without that your customer who is on a tight budget or a restricted, restricted budget for them to be able to get the look that they want all, and also um, within their budget and for you to not have to turn anybody down. So some other resources we have here um, are things that I've already included in the webinar, but when you download the PDF, these links are readily available to you. So what is Raster and Vector, how to place an order at stalls.com, the custom cut artwork guidelines that I included, the rip away, rip away applique process, a link to that entire page with the videos and everything included, mworks.com in case you need direct excuse me, direct embroidery, but you need your file digitized, converted from a raster or vector file into a digitized file. Also a little bit of information on our Embroidery Express Sew Discs, and then a link also to check out the applique sample kits that we talked about earlier. So I would like to thank everybody for attending. I hope you have found this webinar extremely helpful for you. I hope it's opened up some of your ideas if you are just doing direct embroidery on ways that you can 
um, increase your offerings. For those of you that just own a heat press, I hope I've opened up some ideas on ways to be able to utilize your heat press and increase your offerings as well. Um, if you have any additional questions, please feel free to um, email me at info at Great Garment Graphics um, and also visit our website. And for those of you that are interested in any word anyway, I know we just touched on it here, but um, if you would like to join me for a full hour on any word anyway, we will just go through that wizard. We'll talk about split fronts. We'll talk about zipper fronts. We'll talk about sew file, no sew, all of those options. Um, I will be hosting that at the same time as this week, um, this Thursday. And I would really like to thank anyone for everyone for joining. And for those of you that did attend, um, check your email because I'm going to email you shortly after the webinar with that, um, with a link to the video for the rip away applique process, and then also the any word anyway chart. So um, it doesn't look like I have any questions. Thank you so much for the positive feedback. I'm really glad that that everyone found this webinar helpful. And um, get back to your business. Have a great day.